Hello everyone, my name is Alex Gomez and on today's video we're gonna be sculpting this lady from Dishonored 2. If you're new to this channel, please subscribe, comment, like and hit the notification bell so you can be notified when I post a video every Friday. So let's get to it guys. Okay, so I started working with the head. I already had like a head base mesh that I just uh, important start from there so it kind of like saves a little bit of time so sometimes it's a good practice when you definitely create uh, your heads or your uh, base mesh from scratch it's a really good practice but sometimes when you don't have much time you want to save some time definitely just uh, create your own base mesh and get them set up ready so you can just bring them when you're starting a project. I do that a lot with hands. I'm not as good as making hands. So that's what I do. I have a base mesh and when I feel I need to practice, I do practice creating hands. So creating whatever part of the body I, I feel that I need to create or, or to have practice. So as, as always starting with the head, like I carve the eye sockets. Super important to carve the eye sockets first. And I kind of like uh, give the shape of that I have in the skull for the eye sockets. So I can place the eyes after that and build from it. Sometimes it's easier like uh, when you have like an empty space in, in your uh, sculpt and start building from it that uh, actually start carving and, and I, I feel that adding is better than subtracting. That's uh, how I feel like uh, that workflow works for me better. This character was a definitely a different character than the ones that I'm used to do. It's a little bit more realistic and presented its own challenges. So for me, sometimes you guys wonder why I change my style sometimes because you see people that they just uh, do a stylize, 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 so cartoony. I change to uh, semi-realistic, so I stylize, some cartoony. I, I, I think that changing some of the styles and trying something different it can improve your sculpting techniques definitely something that you kind of like a works on stylize or that work on realistic you there are some techniques that you can apply in both or you can mix both of them and definitely is it's just a good practice this is just a good practice when you get out of your comfortable zone and start doing something different that you're not used to do it that's why i like to mix it up in my personal work and personal projects just kind of like i do kind of like a semi-realistic cartoony or the stylized so it's, it's a really good exercise and I feel like uh, I can improve more and take, for example, in this case, I have kind of like a, a, learned a little bit more of the fa facial anatomy that I can bring more into my stylized, uh, stylized or cartoony characters as well. But I really enjoy this, this process a lot. Having said that, I think when you get out of your comfortable zone, you can develop your skills way more. Your sculpting skills are gonna increase, they're gonna get better, they're gonna get faster, and you're gonna learn some stuff that you can apply to other projects as well. It doesn't only happen in sculpting, it happens in any other field in 3D or any other field. It happens to me as uh, once I was working in a VFX studio doing some uh, 3D visual effects and uh, definitely was the first time that I was uh, doing some green screen replacement and doing some matte paintings in 3D and stuff and, uh, and I wasn't used to doing that. I did it a couple of times as a hobby but not in production and after doing that definitely like uh, my set of skills and my speed of uh, generating uh, 3D assets increase enormously so it's so valuable that uh, that try to do like something that you're not comfortable with because you're gonna learn so much about it. What I really like about this project was the combination of uh, realistic and stylized. Uh, I know I haven't, I haven't played this game Dishonored, I know a lot of people like it, but uh, I haven't actually like played it. I really like the art of it, it's amazing, the character designs are spectacular and uh, the thing with uh, with this combination between realistic and stylized is the way that they created the 
texture work per se in the concept designs. Uh, if you see in the in the concept designs, the textures are really uh, kind of like a, with pencil per se, kind of like a prismacolor pencil, kind of like a, a strokes that you can see in the skin. You're gonna see it later on when I when I get some renders at the end of the video. Uh, what I'm talking about, and that's probably one of the parts that I enjoy the most was kind of trying to recreate that texture and trying to recreate that uh, strokes and that uh, prismacolor sense to it. But I was super happy with the results. I was super happy with the results of the sculpt. Uh, it didn't take that long, this sculpting. Probably took around two hours and 35 minutes or three hours at the most. It took me more uh, just uh, doing the texturing. The texturing took me longer and the lighting, I really enjoyed the lighting. The lighting took me a couple of other hours. I definitely remember a while ago, probably I would say around six months, the way that I was struggling with the hair, like creating hair. And uh, one of the things that I learned from that process was practicing the blockout. So having a first blockout, the big shapes, and then worry about the details. But first, just worry about the blockout, how it looks, how it's like a, every piece of the head, like a setup in the head or in the skull. So it's something that I really have uh, learned lately. And it's something that I recommend, as you guys see me, that I pretty much do a sculpt a week. And this is just as a, as a personal project, as a way for me to improve my own skills, as a way to get better, and uh, it's a commitment. And also to share this no, uh, knowledge and share this journey with you guys to see that uh, you guys can, can achieve a, a good level of sculpting if you guys practice or you guys get at least one model every single week or a bust or let's say let's practice a near one week let's practice something else another week and keep keep going at it and keep going at it and and you're gonna see the results from one month two months six months to a year and the improvement is gonna be amazing it's gonna be so big that you guys like are gonna be surprised of, of how much you guys have improved but you have to da do the commitment make the commitment with you guys and uh, to see those results it's a little bit of dedication but you know if you guys love these things if you guys love 3d love 3d sculpting for sure uh, it will be easier because you know uh, this is a good way to pass the time is just to do your hobby and this is for me is my hobby you also going to realize and, and, and you're gonna learn like new techniques when you do these weekly projects or, or as often as you, you can do them i have learned like a pretty much on you know like on, on youtube and look looking at another youtubers and digital sculptors and artists like how to create clothes. I was like having a really hard time understanding and, and how to extract things and, and make them in a really nice shape of geometry. Uh, for example, like jackets or scars or collars or, or things like that. It's just like a, trying to find the, 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 the best technique because I before I used to just uh, extract Dynamesh and just leave it like that, I keep working from the dynamesh, but I wasn't getting like a really good results. And I found like a, when you extract and then you, like as you can see in this example, right here with the eyebrows, when you extract and then you see remesh right after and you move it and then you see remesh and then you move it and you keep see remeshing until you get the desired topology of your geometry and then you're gonna see that it's gonna be way way easier to manipulate your shapes and then if you want to get a let's subdivide away more to add uh, some details to it and it's pretty much what i did with the eyebrows 
And if you see, like, um, as, as I always say, just because you are kind of done one part, it's not done. You're still going to be tweaking and you're still going to analyze your reference and compare a lot all the time. Uh, so this is what I was talking before about the clothes that I just mask extract. And look at this, like the, the geometry that is gonna, the dynamic is giving you, it's, it's so much that it's not gonna work. But the thing when you extract it, uh, it breaks it up in three polygroups. So you can just select the polygroup that is on top, invert the selection and just delete it. And then you can, you can work with a really nicer, like a, then you can just see remeasure and work with a really nicer topology. So you can just add this kind of uh, shapes and you see like I, I did some changes and I uh, see remesh right away. I keep doing changes and, and I keep see remeshing as well. Then I extract and add some loops to it and that's for example like, like a bevel and that's gonna give, a, give, it, give me like those sharp edges. So make sure when you extract you Instead of dynameshing, just uh, go in the poly groups in the poly frame and just select the top uh, and delete the, the rest with the delete hidden when you hide the other ones and then extrude it up and that's going to give you like a really nice, really nice shapes. And this part, like as you know, like at this, some of the techniques that are really kind of like simple that I always do, can, kind of like a series mesh and then just moving stuff around using the poly, the C modeler. That's something that I haven't used before and I just started using C modeler around two months ago. And I, I was so afraid to it because I'm just, <laughs> like it's so different than actually the modeling in Maya or Blender. So I was kind of like afraid of using it and so I just watched a couple of tutorials mostly from uh, Michael Pavlovich, Pavlovich and uh, definitely it make a big difference to do things like that, accessories or, uh, or the color and, and kind of like you, you start learning a little bit better. So thank you so much guys for, for uh, sticking around with me, I'm going to leave you with some cool renders. And don't forget to subscribe, to comment, to like, to share, and uh, make sure you share this with your friends. And see you next week. Take care, guys, and have an amazing weekend.